Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Months of work gone. The recent flooding hit one community in Johnson County hard. The Oil Springs Cultural Arts and Recreation Center, also known as Oscar, received a lot of damage. WIMT's Marianne Fletcher talked to the renter, who says this is a heartbreaking situation. Supplies ruined, power tools destroyed, and tiles flooded. Oh, I just cried. <laughs> that was just heartbreaking. Floodwaters hit hard in the Oil Springs Cultural Arts and Recreation Center, also known as Oscar. The community has put so much work and effort into this building, and I just was like heartbroken because it's like, this doesn't happen here. Rebecca Clay is renting the bottom half of the center. So when the floodwaters came and it was caked all over everything, it was just heartbreaking. Rooms are used for craft teaching, artist galleries, and a photography studio. I just feel like it's different as opposed to a grocery store, things that are commercially bought, as opposed to someone's local handmade things. Now Clay and a few others are cleaning up what's left behind. A percentage of every workshop goes to fund this building to keep the lights on. But she still keeps a positive attitude. We've lost supplies and things like that, but nobody was hurt, so they were very thankful for that. During this rough situation in Johnson County, Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Now, the Oscar Center is a nonprofit organization. If you would like to donate, you can contact the Route 23 Cultural Heritage Network at 866 217 5299. An update tonight on US 23 in Ival, where a mudslide is still threatening the roadway. Crews became concerned about the slide on top of the hill Sunday. They closed the northbound lanes. Currently, the southbound lanes are used for one lane in each direction. There is no timetable right now on when the northbound lanes could reopen. While we focused a lot the past couple of days on Lake Cumberland, today we wanted to check on Buckhorn Lake. It is the highest it's been since a major flood in 1963. WIMT's Lauren McCourt shows us how the marina manager is keeping tabs on the boats. Known for its beautiful scenery, Buckhorn State Park is a place thousands of people visit each year. Yeah, you can see the water up to the tele the power lines. And if you stop by the past few days, you may have noticed that the water is unusually high. The lake is at 832 feet above sea level. 50 feet higher to be exact. Luckily, the water didn't rise enough to damage the lodge or cabins. And when it kept coming up, I was wondering, well, <laughs> where's it going to go? But for the park's marine manager, Ryan Miller, it's been a different story. We have to come out three, four times a day. He's keeping a close eye on the dock. We got an RV we bring over and camp out in the parking lot and just keep an eye on everything. Miller took over about three years ago. He really didn't know what to expect. Everybody kept saying, yeah, it's been a, I've seen it up to the net on the ball go in the parking lot. When the rain started coming down, he started using the goal as a measuring stick. Saturday, it started coming up on the ball go. Sunday, the net was touching. And just a few hours later. And then by... Sunday night, the ball goal was disappeared. He knew it was going to be a long couple of weeks. In Buckhorn, Lauren McCourt, WYMT Mountain News. Crazy to see the water that high there. Now, because of the amount of water pressing on the dam, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is releasing a lot of water. And, of course, that is flooding the Confluence community in Leslie County. We've also been telling you about that in recent days. And at 6, we'll take you back there to see how folks are coping. And hopefully the sunshine over the past couple of days and even as we head into tomorrow will help some of these areas soak up some of that water. It's been a beautiful day though across eastern Kentucky. You can see that here on US 119, US 23 in Jenkins. Just sunshine taking over over there. And then as we look at right outside our front door here at the WIMT studios, we're seeing just a few of those thin clouds in the sky, but we are still seeing those blue skies and the sunshine. Like I said, another beautiful day. And as we scan the skies, looking at pinpoint Doppler, you'll notice that we are seeing a clean sweep. It's nice to see that over the past couple of days. You'll also notice those flood warnings have died down a little bit or have canceled over the past really 24 hours, which that's good news because most of our rivers are now starting to recede and get out of flood state 
stage. So hopefully with more sunshine tomorrow, we'll see almost all of our flood warnings get out of here before we see a little bit more rain. Temperatures, though, are pretty comfortable into those low 50s in some spots up into the Big Sandy to those mid to upper 50s. Some spots maybe even hit 60 for today, Steve. And the good news is good news is, is as we head into tomorrow, we'll actually see those temperatures get into those mid to upper 60s, maybe in some spots. I'll have those details coming up in just a little bit. Thank you very much, Paige. Police work to reconstruct a crash in northern Perry County this morning. They want to figure out what caused the crash that killed two people on Saturday. Police told us yesterday they believe 59-year-old Robert Campbell's car crossed the center line and hit 48-year-old Judy Willoughby's car. She died at the scene. He later died at the hospital. Investigators do not believe impairment was a factor in the crash. A Kentucky school district is taking action after an incident involving its fans at a high school basketball game. In a statement released today, Estill County Superintendent Jeff Saylor said the district is working to develop a plan of action to address hostile atmospheres at athletic events. This comes after some fans were ejected at a district tournament basketball game last week in Owsley County. Saylor said he believes Astor County fans were unfairly criticized following the incident and that the host school could have handled the situation better. Seven children and three adults escaped from a burning home in Corbin this morning. The fire was at a home on Engineer Street on the Knox County side of Corbin. At least two of the children and their mother had to be taken to the hospital for burn injuries. Firefighters say additions to the home made fighting the fire very difficult. At 6 o'clock, you'll hear from two women who rushed to help the people living inside. Rescue crews finally reached nearly 200 people who were stuck on a train in the cold for nearly 36 hours south of Eugene, Oregon. The train was en route from Seattle to Los Angeles when officials say it struck a tree that fell on the track Sunday evening. Passengers say food was running out and parents with young children had no more diapers. I just wanted to come outside and breathe air and put my feet on the ground. <laughs> like, it's been nuts. In a tweet, Amtrak warned passengers along the route to expect additional delays as the train returns to Seattle. There's about a foot of snow on the ground in that area. President Trump is in Vietnam tonight for a second summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The president is not expected to see Kim until tomorrow night when they'll have meet for dinner. He's expected to meet with Vietnamese officials earlier in the day. The two leaders met in Singapore last June. This summit is expected to build upon their agreement to work toward complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. The House is expected to pass a resolution today aimed at terminating President Trump's national emergency declaration at the southern border. Democratic leaders say it violates the constitutional balance of power. Only one Republican congressman is supporting the resolution. President Trump says he will veto it if it reaches his desk. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, President Trump's former fixer begins three days of testimony. Hear what the man headed to prison is expected to say about the president. And you'll want to keep the WYMC weather app handy over the next couple of days because more rain chances are expected to move back into the forecast. Good news is we'll be a little bit warmer heading into your Wednesday, but the, also we have a chance for a wintry mix as we head into your weekend. Cleanup continues across eastern Kentucky today after the flooding that we saw over the weekend. Straight ahead, hear about a community in Wolf County who's picking up the pieces after the flooding that they saw rushed into their homes, floated away cars and buildings, but most importantly, didn't break their spirits.